Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the ACT. Starting today, you and I will work on all the math problems that are to be found in this book here. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. It is called the official the official ACT test prep guide. It contains five real examples. It says right on here, this is the only source on the market which contains the real exam. And it has, as I said just now, five exams. Each exam contains 60 multiple choice math questions. that are all to get a 300 problem. If you go through all of those 300 problems with me and make sure you solve every one of them and understand the material, the concept that are tested on those 300 questions, that will be an excellent preparation to get you ready for the math portion of the exam. If you need help in, help in the grammar, as of right now I have no grammar videos for the ACT on my channel, but I do have plenty of about, I believe 50 videos that deal with the grammar of the SAT. Now I understand that we are here for ACT, but grammar is grammar. Grammar, rules of grammars do not change from one exam to the other. You might find it fruitful, fruitful. you might find it helpful to go through some of those videos to brush up on some basic concepts of grammar, the basic concepts that are tested on both the, both of the exam in, in the same way. Also, if you, if you need to improve your vocabulary, if you need to work on your vocabulary, which is an essential part of the exam obviously, you will also find vocabulary video on my channel. Okay? Enough of the talk, let's begin. Exam number one, section number two, page 164. Okay, please, please turn to page number 164, and today is our first lesson, lesson number one. Question number one. It says that this person that they're talking about, that person ran one and one and two fifth mile. Kaya, she ran one and two fifth mile on Monday, and then she ran two and one third mile on Tuesday. And the question simply is, what's the total of these two figures? So let's, let's find out, shall we? Now, of course, the idea is to solve this problem as quickly as possible so that you don't end up taking an inordinate amount of time. For example, here we have 1 and 2 fifth plus 2 and 1 third. Don't carry that 1 and 2 throughout the entire journey. Don't carry that extra luggage on your shoulder. The so we're going to leave this 1 and 2 in abeyance. Let's leave 1 and 2 in abeyance. Let's work on the fraction part first. So we have 2 fifth plus a third. Of course, we have to make the denominator the same for, before we can do anything with the numerator. And how do we make the denominator the same? We have a 5 here and we have a 3 here. Let's make the denominator uh, 15 for both of them. How do we convert this 2 fifth into a denominator of 15? Well, that's very simple. Multiply the top and the bottom by 3. And it's okay to multiply 2 fifths by 3 over 3 because 3 over 3 is just 1. We haven't changed the value of this fraction. The fraction is still 2 fifths because all, all we have done is multiply it by 1. Similarly here, we're going we're gonna to multiply it by 1, but it's going to take a different form. We want, we want a denominator of 15, so let's multiply the top and bottom by 5. There we go. So now they both have the denominator of 3 times 5, which is 15. And here we have 3 times 2, which is 6. And here we have 1 times 5, uh, which is 5, and we end up with 11 over 15. And don't forget, we have this 1 and 2 that we had kept in abeyance, so 1 plus 2 is 3. So the final answer is, the final answer is 3, 1 plus 2 is 3, and the, and the, and the sum total of the fra fractional part was 11 over 15. There you go, that's it. Don't carry that 1 and the 2. The word abeyance... I know we have just met, this is our first day, but I'm going to tell you here exactly if you're interested in learning. On day number 9, just type in, just type in ACT vocabulary words, ACT vocabulary words, day 9, along with my name, along with my name, and the video will pop right up and you will learn about abeyance. I'm not sure if you have learned about inordinate or not. Inordinate means excessive, unreasonable. I don't believe we have learned it. I don't believe we, I have covered that word in the, in the vocabulary video. We'll do that. In, we'll, I will cover that uh, word in the future. 
inordinate simply means excessive unreasonable amount of time so your job is to get the job, get the question done as quickly as possible without taking an inordinate amount of time and 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 carrying that one and two extra on our shoulder would have just created more work for us just keep them aside keep them in abeyance number two that's it we're done with this thing number two In number two, we are given this expression 3x cubed times 2 times x squared y times 4x squared y. And we are simply asked to simplify this expression. We are asked to find out what's the equivalent quantity to this, this, uh, this quantity that is given, given to us here, the product of these three quantities. So here we have a we have a 3 times 2 times 4. Let's find out what that is. 3 times 2 is 6 and 6 times 4 is 24 so that's 24 24 and then we have x cubed and x squared and x squared so x cubed and x squared and x squared we have to add the exponents when they are being multiplied similarly we have a y and a y this y right here and a y here so that's just going to be y plus one, uh, y raised to 1 plus 1 that's it we're done and whatever that works out to be 24 x raised to 7 and y raised to 2 well, and that turns out to be answer choice h I'm not going to each time tell you what the answer choice is because it just takes an extra time you know what the answer choice is just compare what the answer choices are given to you let's look at number 3 shall we number 3 is what you will see is a classic example of what I'm talking about learn how to take this exam in a smart way I know as you watch more of my videos you will see that I have a habit of breaking into sermons uh, every once in a while every now and then. Uh, the sermons are very important. Learn how to take this exam in a smart way. Don't spend your time doing unnecessary work. Just because they ask you certain things in a certain way does not mean that you have to behave like a bloody puppet. Take some liberties. Do you understand? Take charge of your, uh, of, of your destiny. Don't let them, don't let them uh, pull a string as if you were a puppet. Number three. For example, I'll, you'll see what I mean by you'll see what I mean by all that in number three in a second. In number three, they're telling us that the regular the the, the regular teacher's salary, the regular teacher's salary. Oh, I can't write the crying out loud. The regular teacher's salary is for 185 days. is 22,570 we are told that the substitute teacher we are told the substitute teacher gets paid is paid $80 per day and the question simply is if your regular teacher were absent one day why do I say if your teacher were absent. I'm, I'm, I'm digressing here. I'm digressing big time. Why, why do I say if your regular teacher were absent? Your teacher is singular. It's just one teacher. Why were? This is one of the quirk, one of the idiosyncrasies, one of the eccentricities of the English language. English language requires that when one is speaking hypothetically, when one is speaking hypothetically, then the were needs to take the plural form, even if the subject of the sentence, even if the subject of the sentence is singular. If I were rich, if I were, I'm not. If I were, I'm speaking hypothetically. If I were rich, I would buy a BMW or a Mercedes or something, something to that nature. Do you understand? If I were rich, I'm speaking hypothetically. Do you understand? You would say, well, obviously the store is open. You can see the store is open. If it were, uh, if it were Sunday today, if it, if it were Sunday, the post office would not have been open. You can clearly see post office is open. If it were, if it were Sunday, it would not have been open. If it, if it, if it were, it were. You see again, we are speaking hypo hypothetically. Okay. If somebody asks you, is today, uh, I, I think today is Sunday, obviously today is not Sunday, you can clearly see across the street, the post office is open. 
and the post office would not have been open had it been Sunday. If it were Sunday, it would not have been open. It's hypothetical. Do you understand? So, back to our thing. So, what I was what, what this problem says is that the regular teacher's salary is $22,570 for, for a work that the teacher does in 185 days in a year. And the regular and, and the substitute teacher apparently is paid eighty dollars an hour, eighty dollars a day. The question simply is, if your regular teacher were absent, hypothetical statement here, if 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 he or she were absent, the question is, as a result, the school will hire a substitute teacher, and as a result, how much money will they save? Let's find out, shall we? Enough of the talk. We're gonna we're gonna learn all of these words in a second. We have to learn the word digress in a second. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. So 22, 22, 570. 22,570 divided by 185. Now, if you sit there and if you insist, if you're hell bent on being a good boy or a good girl and solving this thing the way it is, it will take an inordinate amount of time. It will take excessive amount of time. It will take unreasonable amount of time, and you won't get any. You won't get any extra point for it. Nobody's looking at your work. They're just interested in whether or not you pick the right answer. They don't care how you got it. Do you understand? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pretend that. 22,570 is approximately 22,600. That's not a big deal. That's, that's, that's a very small, minor thing because we're just rounding it up by $30. That's not the big deal. The big deal is going to come what we're going to do in the bottom here. Now, keep the, I'm, I'm going to put the cap back on so I can keep talking because otherwise it's going to get dry, the marker. It's okay. Not only it is okay, but it's actually a requirement. It is a requirement that you approximate throughout the entire exam. If you do not learn to approximate, you will never get a decent score because you will end up taking too much time on each question. You have to approximate. It's okay to approximate. It is actually a good strategy to approximate, but there is a condition. The condition is that whenever you approximate, you must always, you must always be cognizant of whether or not you are, you must always be cognizant of whether you are underestimating or overestimating. You must always be aware of it. It's okay to approximate as long as you know as a result did you end up overestimating? Is the real quantity less than this quantity? Or did you end up underestimating? Is the real quantity, the real answer more than this answer? For example here, for example here, this is 185. I'm a lazy guy. I'm going to pretend it's 200. Now what happens when you divide by a bigger number? Are we going to end up underestimating or overestimating? This quantity is going to be less than what it's supposed to be. Had we divided this quantity 22,600 by 185, had we divided 22,600 by 185, the figure would have been higher. We are dividing it by 200. We are dividing it by a larger denominator. Hence, we're going to end up underestimating it. So the correct answer, whatever it is, is going to be slightly more than what we find here. That's the key. That is the key part. That's the difference between taking the exam in a smart way and taking the exam like a nerd, like a geek, like a freak, like a, like a, like a good old schoolboy or a schoolgirl. Do you understand? Don't do that. So that's it. We're done. Enough of the talk. We're done. Divide bottom, top and bottom by 100. The two zeros drop out. Divide top and bottom by 2. And you, you, you will get 1, 1, 3. That's it. $113 is what the school pays to a regular teacher on a given day. Here they're paying $80. So 113, 113 minus 80. They're going to say... $33, but our guess is that because we are dividing it by such a large number, instead of 185, we are dividing by 200, the answer should be around $35, $40. That's the range we are looking at. So if you find the one answer choice that comes in, that comes very close to it, you're done. Now, if it turns out, unfortunately, which is going to happen sometimes, if it turns out that the answer choices are very close to each other, if the answer choices are very close to each other and you can't really tell if one answer choice is 37, another one is 39, another one is 41, you can't really tell which one is the answer because they're all very close to 40. You can't tell. In that case, of course, you have to do extra work. But that does not happen very often. In most cases, you can get away. Do you understand? For example, here the answer choices are, oh Jesus, look at that. First question, first one is 42. First answer choice is 42. And then it jumps all the way up to... 80. No, no, it's not going to double the amount. It's not going to double the amount from A to B. The answer is A. The answer is A. This is 33 is what we're getting. 33 is an underestimation. So the answer is 42. It's not going to jump from 42 to 80. That's too much. They're too far apart. They're way too far apart. The answer is A. Let's move on to number 4, shall we? Let's move on to number 4. Give me 
me one second. I want to see what how much time I've taken in the video. Just give me one brief second. I'm not going anywhere. I'm still here. We are we are 15 minutes into it. I'm going to actually end the video right now because the question number four that we that I have there, I want to do it separately. I want to do it separately. Make sure you watch tomorrow's video and you will learn something out of it. You will know how to solve average problem on the exam without actually doing it in a classical way. If you do it in a classical way and you set it up with the algebraic equation, it takes too much time. I will show you tomorrow and we will not just do question number four, but we will do two more extra problem, bonus problem dealing with the average so that you can get some practice. Uh, and then we are going to learn a new technique. Do you understand? As to how to solve the average problem. Make sure you watch tomorrow's video. I am going to end the video right now. Okay? I will see you tomorrow on, for question number four. Okay? Bye now.